apparently a multi-generational village site, including levels of block stacking technologies that you see in front of you, and uh, things that probably predate that, which are grinding holes, which probably go back thousands of years. Uh, one could conjecture that uh, this was a defense point. We've seen a number of sites like this in this particular park complex. Uh, these have shooting holes through them, one can imagine, or sighting holes. Uh, there have been other areas that appeared defensible that have also had that. But I think the main uh, takeaway from this place is it's been occupied for a very, very long time. And these grinding holes that are in the foreground are probably in evidence of that, uh, certainly attended by Indians. I think there's other layers of cultures, 1820s Californios, and uh, possibly later kinds of uh, activities clear up to the present. They still run cattle on this property, and I think people avail themselves to it. So uh, this place, uh, we won't disclose its complete location because it's not well documented, and I think it deserves further study and exploration. Uh, be good to have somebody come out here and do a GPS survey of where all the holes are, and some look like they uh, are uh, precede current generation. So if you look at this one I'm pointing out here, these appear to be ones broken through in a block that's possible by faulting activity covered with a half inch or an inch of mossy material that's seasonally green. And you can see outlines of things that look like they were former grinding holes. So one speculates, was this part of an earthquake complex? Did somebody blow this up and uh, using powder? There's more split ones over here. Uh, it, the more you look, it looks like these may have been dimited. Uh, these are completely broken off in large chunks from what appears to be a larger complex. So uh, it's kind of odd, you know, I wouldn't think, that, you know, and then this one got relocated into part of a wall complex many, many years later. So we're talking about things that probably happened in the mid-19th century. But... Uh, well, there has been uh, known human occupation in the Bay Area for 10,000 years. And how and when people came out here is a matter of speculation. Some people say 6,000 years, and others say 2,000 years. And some people say that the grinding holes were only made 1,000 years ago, and uh, you only move into this land when you're able to make use of the resources. And that's the, the, it certainly doesn't support any young conjecture. Look at this rock here. So this is just an example. I, my first degree was in geology. I don't actually work in geology anymore, but uh, one can learn how to read rocks. And, you know, there's sort of some indication that this thing has fractured here and has been tipped over. That doesn't just happen. That, you know, this is something that is caused, but there's weathering. All the edges are soft. So it happened a long time ago because it's not a fresh fracture, only in places where it hasn't been rained on as it fresh. Well, and the soft curves on this rock might well be attributed to the uh, tannic acid that came out of the acorns that Certainly, were... Certainly. You know, this um, kind of etching and expansion of the cracks, I think, is entirely... Yeah, that they would that. take a handful of uh, soaked acorn mash and drag it up onto uh, this surface here in order to... Uh, uh, dry it and drain it. Treading around it in the process, wearing it off with their feet and hands, you know, that you, this rock takes on an organic form for the person who sits here. This and one operates. here, too, clearly has been worn and used. And, and it's got a tree growing out of the middle of it. And so that's a know, bay tree, which, uh, you know, they tend to live in clusters, so, you know, they, yeah. So. It's a clone, it's a grove, so whatever look at tree. This, they're in a circle about 10 feet wide. That is actually part of the same rootstock. Jack's climbing into the center of it right now. And if you look to each side of where he is, uh, it's a bunch of branches growing out of a rock pile. But these are likely to be clones like creosote bushes, where they grow in a circle. The circles are tens of feet across. And if you figure growing, you know, 20 inch a year, that makes these some very old objects indeed. You know, that, uh, I'm sorry, 20 lines per, uh, per uh, you know, inch. inch is what I meant, yeah. sorry. Uh, so if you figure that's, you know, 12 times 20, whatever that, so every foot gives you a fairly uh, large number. And then you got 10 feet here, we're talking thousands of years. You know? I'm going to walk around to that piece of stone furniture I was just shooting 
from that side and uh, you can see this whole site is uh, just rift with holes. Uh, we've heard uh, a count of 625 and uh, heaven knows how true that is. Yeah, they're and you can't help but uh, find more too if you're looking. So actually knowing how many there are and where they are and where these rocks are uh, we feel should be uh, documented and that's one of the reasons why we're out here because we feel that it is a very valuable and interesting piece of uh, Native American history that and we don't further, understand but yeah further by doing it in a walkthrough mode there's uh, digital information that can be stacked inside you know just uh, photogrammetry you can do this without much frame of reference. The images from this video can be stacked. I can probably tell you more about that. You can create wireframes from walk around video frames. It doesn't require any unexistent software. It's readily available. And uh, you can develop three dimensional models from walk arounds of these kinds of structures, at least over small scales. And the better you cover it, the more detailed your model will be. Yes, we've done balloon coverage of subdivisions and uh, experimental gardens, organic gardens, and uh, uh, also of individual rocks to make 3D models. Um, and so this is a good place to exercise some of those uh, tools. And this uh, little Sony bloggy is very nice for uh, just covering this area. Um, Rate of data capture from just a little small handheld device like that. There's a lot of information streaming in, and it becomes self-reference that you can take data like this and differentially analyze it. Each frame becomes a guide point to the next one, and uh, I know that's all very mathematically, but you know, the upshot of this is it's actually quite straightforward to take frames from video sequences and turn them into digital representations of those objects. So even though we don't have our GPS out here today, somebody could take this data and start building a wireframe and figure out where these rocks to the left are, where these uh, holes are under the uh, camera now, and be able to say, oh, well, we j he just traversed X number of seconds, and we think that's, you know, 47 feet, and we haven't measured it, but that's my guess. Uh, right, those yeah. are little purple bugs Yeah, there. isn't that cool? I saw that. I saw them doing it. I didn't know that they were bugs. We Spittle bugs. Uh, hmm. They blow bubbles and mucus. Oh, Sorry, wonderful. Folks, that's wonderful. what it is. Let's take a closer look. So, we'll edit that out for those who are squeamish. No, There's they're kind of cute. We didn't resolve any grossness. Any and grossness. So here, this uh, is shooting a panorama of 528 photos, and it's 300 and some into it. And uh, it's doing a 360 of this area. All of these rocks are uh, really Swiss cheese. A lot of use. You can see uh, as Brandon had mentioned that some of these, this had a big chip out of it. And you can see how much lichen is growing on that surface. It really shows how, uh, how very old uh, or how long ago it was that that uh, chipped off. I try to make a point of it not walking on it too because, you know, uh, if we're going to trample something, trampling the vegetation is preferable to trampling these rocks which are quite old. So. We don't hang around on them a lot and walk on them, just to preserve some of their pristineness. Yeah, we don't like to knock off the uh, lichen. We want it to look like uh, you're discovering the place as we had many, many years ago. In this whole area. Nice place to live, don't you think?